In a game as big and complicated as Civ 6, there are always going to be parts of the game that just kind of fly under the radar that exist. They're there, you can use them, but you don't really know about them, you don't really know what they do, and there's so many districts and leaders and other things and units and stuff going on that you can't even dig deep into it because you're trying to figure out all of the other things. An example of one of the aspects of Civ 6 that just kind of slips through the cracks, flies under the radar, isn't used by most people who play the game are railroads. Like most things in Civ, railroads are not useful in every game of Civ, However, when you can use them properly, they are incredible, they are irreplaceable in some games with some challenges or some victory conditions, and I just want to have a video, a conversation between me and your YouTube comments today about railroads so that everyone leaves this video understanding a little more about them, understanding how to use them, and possibly when to use them. That way in your next Civ game, when you have an opportunity, you can pull them out, you can add it to your tool belt, and hopefully either increase your difficulty, destroy your opponents a little bit harder, whatever you want to do with the railroads roads. Frankly, I don't care. I just want you to know they exist so that you can have more fun in Civ 6. Welcome in everybody. You are now looking at a game that I played on stream today as the Aztecs with the whole goal, the whole challenge of the game is to make the beefiest possible vampire. Uh, we're going to keep adding plus one combat strength to these vampires until we either lose the game or have a vampire that can destroy helicopters and GDRs and stuff. So if you want to continue watching that game, that link is in the description, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. But now you're probably thinking, hey, I came here for the railroads. Let's talk about the railroads. So as I was playing this game, one of the reasons I really wanted to use railroads, you can see them right here, they are very pretty, is for the movement speed boost. This is obviously going to be the main thing that the railroads are going to do for you, but you might be asking yourself, why was that necessary? There are other ways to increase the movement speed of units. It's because vampires are really, really slow. Vampires have two movement, they stay at two movement the entire time they exist. We picked a new world map that has a lot of hills, there's a lot of mounds, there's a lot of places we need to maneuver around. It's also a regular regular sized map. Normally we play on small, but if we play on small, that's not enough people in the game for us to kill their units and make giant vampires. And so in the service of having a giant Dracula-like vampire running around, we had to create a bigger map. This obviously creates lots of problems. I need to be able to get these vampires from place to place, from city to city, so they can absorb and eat the other units in this game, and thus increase their combat strength. We have a really big map. I gotta get them all the way up to Scotland, then all the way down to Canada. We already made, you know, pretty quick work of France, which is fun. We gotta get over to Korea. We gotta get down to India. And we have to do it all before I lose this game. No one is at a space race victory yet, but there are, you know, 250 signs. They're gonna be getting there soon. So I need to do this very quickly. Q railroads. Railroads are the way I decided were the best way to move these units around the map to achieve a domination victory this game while also making these big chunky vampires. Now in your games, railroads might be used for different reasons, but let's talk about them a little bit and then I'll show you how I've been using them. Now there are a few reasons I surmise that people don't use railroads. This is all anecdotal. I'm just gonna throw out what I think might be the correct answer. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm just spitballing here. I, I just watch a lot of Civ and play a lot of Civ and I can imagine some reasons why. A lot of people might not know railroads exist. First off, they are up in steam power on the tech tree. Now actually, I think in kind of uh, lower level games on lower difficulties, uh, more, more people are building more industrial zones. They're very, very enticing. Um, and so a lot of people might be coming up for these facts factories, which puts you quite a bit closer to railroads. I find that, you know, in the deity scene with all the people that play on deity, at least the ones that I know about, there's not a lot of industrial zones happening, and so the factories aren't as prevalent. But yeah, it's up in steam power. It's a little bit tricky to get to. It's a little bit out of the way. You can see if you're kind of rushing up to steam power for the railroads, you're missing out on bombards, on field cannons, on military academies, on rangers, on all these kind of economics, right? You're missing out on all kinds of good stuff to come up here. And also, at this point, you're kind of halfway through the game, right? And so by the time you come to railroads, you're kind of running out of time to, to get them, build them, and make them useful before the game ends anyway. So I think that I think people are scared by where they are in the tree. But if you are playing a game where you feel like you need railroads, come up and get them. They're pretty good. The next reason I think is that people just don't know what the heck to do with them. They're a little bit complicated. And so you can't just build them with a builder. And I think that throws a lot of people off. Uh, they can only be constructed by military engineers. So this is the first thing. If we go here, it's for a military engineer, if I could type. 
Military engineer. Here we are. You need an armory. It says right here, requires an armory. So what you gotta do is you gotta come in here, you gotta get your encampment, then you gotta go get your barracks and whatever. Then you gotta come down to military engineering to get your armory, which you just don't do in every game, right? So uh, you're gonna come down, you're gonna unlock the armory here, and then once you've unlocked the armory, you need to have built an encampment, which doesn't also happen every game. And so again, in a game where you want uh, you want railroads, you're gonna have to build an encampment and you're gonna have to have an armory in order to get the military engineer. In this game, we built an encampment and as I don't even want to say that name, um, we got the terracotta army, it was lovely, but this was our initial encampment and then on our journeys with our vampires, we've inherited a few along the way. So you've decided you want railroads, you came down to military engineering, you got your armory and your encampment and all that stuff, you've built it, fantastic. The military, engineer, blah, blah, blah. the military engineer is built right here anyway, so you don't need to unlock anything else for that. Then you come up here and you're like, I've got my railroads, they are good to go, I have them unlocked. How do I make this a reality? Well, the next thing you need is iron and coal, and you're gonna need a lot of it. So each railroad that you place takes one iron and one coal. And so uh, I have 110 uh, iron and 70 coal and I'm stockpiling plus eight per turn kind of net there and plus 10 here. So I'm able to build up to eight railroads per turn with just what I'm bringing in and then I have a stockpile. So for a, a set amount of turns, I could build more than that. That's a crazy amount. And in this game, I have decided to get many uh, military engineers to accomplish this goal. It's a big map. I need to build lots of railroads and I'm gonna use the fact that I can build up to eight per turn with the resources I have available. Once you've done all the prerequisites that we've talked about and you have a military engineer or more than one, uh, building the railroads is actually quite easy. One military engineer can build one railroad per turn and the option just comes up on this selection menu here. You click the military engineer, it says build railroad and then you can build the railroad and they will automatically connect to each other. We can do this again up here. You can build them anywhere. It does not need to be in a place that has a road. You can build them on any tile. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna build my railroad. You can build them in other people's territory as well, which in this game we wanna do. We wanna be able, at some point, we're gonna have to come kill Scotland. I wanna have their whole territory railroaded up so I can move my vampires in there nice and quickly. The next turn has now passed. As you can see, as long as we have one iron and one coal, each military engineer can build another railroad. Having more military engineers means we can build more railroads in a turn and we can get the map railroaded up quickly. So the only limit to how many uh, railroads you can build is how many military engineers do you have and will each military engineer have one iron and one coal available every turn for a railroad. Now at this point I should mention the final reason I believe most people don't use railroads. Simply it just takes a lot of time. Civ is already a game that takes a lot of time. Each game no matter what skill level you're playing at, no matter what size game, is going to take a couple hours at the, at the minimum. And so having a bunch of units that you need need to manually move around and look you can't even build them every turn right because you still have to have the movement to do it and so you sometimes you can't even build one railroad per turn if the map is really hilly like this over here I'm having a better time because a lot of this was flat but you can see it just adds a lot of time to every turn now you might be asking yourself, hey VB, you just told me it takes a lot of time. You just told me it's a little bit weird to come up to steam power and not everyone's building encampments and coming down and getting an armory is a little bit annoying. So why would I do this? Why is it worth the effort? Now, like anything, it's if it's not worth the effort every game. I'm gonna say I build railroads in 10% of my games, but when it is worth the effort, it really is. There are a few reasons. First is movement, and that is the reason we are doing that in this game. Railroads provide a ton of movement, not just to vampires, but to any unit that is traveling across them. This is very helpful in a few different types of games. In a game like this, where not only do I have vampires that I need to move around for their ability, um, where I have units that have promotions. I am currently the Suze of Kabul. I am getting a lot of extra experience from them. From that extra experience, I'm able to have units with promotions. I've got a lot of encampments. I've got Victor giving free promotions out. I've got uh, this crossbowman with three promotions. I've got Terracotta Army giving lots of promotions. And so what's happening is I want to continue to use these same units. And if I'm going to use these same units over here with all their promotions, they're going to get even more promotions. But if I want them to fight over here and then fight all the way across the map over here, I got to get them around. I need railroads to do that or I will be spending a million turns just, just moving my units around. 
And so let's take a look. Take a look at these vampires. Two movement, I'm gonna move it to this tile, right? Once I get it onto this tile, it should be on a railroad. I can only move one tile in every direction. If I wanted to move one tile at a time all the way across here, it would take me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-ish. Right, eight, this is all hill tiles, about eight turns to get to rim, somewhere between six and 10, if I'm done my math wrong, it would take me a while. Um, so we'll start the count here, that's one turn. How many turns is it gonna take me to get to rim once I get on this railroad? We're at one currently. You can see up here with this vampire as well, not a lot of railroads. I do have some flat tiles here, which is a little bit helpful. I've got a great general, which is kind of nice, but if I wanna cross the river, I still can't do much more than one tile. I have some extra boost happening over here. Like I said, there are other ways to increase your movement, but let's see what happens with this vampire once it gets on a railroad. All right, so I am on a railroad. Let's see how long it's gonna take me to get to REM. We said somewhere between six to 10 turns, depending on how poorly I've done my math. I think it's eight, it might be seven. Anyways, I'm gonna click on this and I got past REM in one turn. So railroads, not only do they increase your movement, they drastically increase your movement. It is not a little bit of a boost. As long as you're traveling along an entire railroad, you can move your units across the entire, like from Scotland to Canada in two turns, three turns for some, for some of the slower units, two turns for some of the faster ones like cavalry. Railroads drastically increase your movement. And in a game like this with slow units, with high promotion units on a large map that's full of hills, there is nothing better in this game for me to accomplish my goals than railroads. But I had the benefit of knowing they exist and knowing how to use them. So I hope that you've learned in this video that they exist and how to use them. Another fun little tidbit about railroads, they actually increase your trade routes as well. Uh, railroads can multiply the gold they get from districts at their destination. So that's super fun. Um, I'm gonna read it. Greatly improves movement speed of any unit moving from one railroad tile to another. Uh, trade routes traveling over railroads can multiply the gold they get uh, at the destination. So just for some math here, movement cost is 0.25. So for every one tile a unit could move before, they can now move four tiles, which is absolutely crazy. So you take a vampire that had two movement, it now effectively has eight movement as long as it's going across the railroad, which is roughly actually what I counted from here to Rem. I counted about eight, uh, somewhere between six and 10, and that's exactly how far it moved. And, and so it's absolutely incredible. And then you just keep plopping down more railroads. And there you are, we're connecting everything together really nicely. This is gonna extend into Scotland really nicely. And we're gonna have a good time moving all our units around the map. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope this little quick video on railroads, a very targeted kind of tutorial was helpful for you. I hope that in some games soon you will be able to use railroads effectively. I will warn you, they do take a lot of time and it is a little bit weird to get to them. So if you're in a game on a small map, you're using friggin' bombers to bomb everyone or you're doing a culture victory or whatever, probably don't need railroads. However, in the games like the one I just showed you where they are useful, they completely change the game. And having as many little back pocket game changers as you can for your Civ games will immensely help you out. And now you all know, maybe it'll be six games before the railroads are helpful, but now that you know that they exist, how to build them and how good they can be when used effectively, I hope sometime soon in your game of Civ, you will be able to, to pull it out and have a good time and make your civic experience better for having watched this video and learned about railroads. If you enjoyed that on the way out, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, specifically look down in the links below for the one that takes you to twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. That is where I play Civ Live all the time if you wanna catch me playing a game like this where we're trying to make big chunky vampires that are gonna tear down helicopters. That just sounds fun. You should be there too. That is in the description. Let me know your opinion on railroads in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.